there you are. You caught me practicing my potatoes on fiddle anyway, and I need lots of practice, I'll tell you what. Hey, today is a lesson on potatoes, but for the mandolin. I've taught this on banjo. I've had lots of requests to do it on mandolin. I want to do that today. And uh, you may be asking yourself, what are potatoes? Well, you just heard one, but let me give you some mandolin context. Roll that beautiful potato footage. So potatoes, put quite simply, are a way for us to kick off primarily fiddle tunes. And we want to talk about what they are and how to do them and what are some different elements that we can include and how do we go about playing potatoes in different keys. But first, I want to ask you, if you love these videos, to subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell so that you're notified whenever I put up these new videos. I put up lessons for banjo, guitar, mandolin, and funny videos from time to time. Uh, let me grab my mandolin. We'll jump right in. All right, I've got something a little more familiar in my hands. Let's talk about potatoes. What are the purpose of taters or potatoes? Well, they work great in jam settings and also um, performance settings, uh, but they're, they're an element that allows us to communicate musically whenever we're getting ready to start playing a song, uh, particularly a fiddle tune. Um, and potatoes are going to, of course, tell us what key we're in because whatever key we're in, that particular note's going to be the star of the potato. But beyond that, they're going to tell us some very important things, two things in particular. One, they're going to tell us the tempo of the song, and they're also going to tell us the timing of the song. So whenever we kick off these potatoes, that's the tempo that the rest of the fiddle tune will go, usually. <laughs> um, and also, they're going to give us the timing. What do I mean by that? I mean when the other members of the jam group or the band are going to come in. So typically we'll play either one potato or two potatoes. And sometimes we even say it before we start. I'm going to play a couple of potatoes. Now, what is one potato? Well, one potato, let's break it down to its most basic elements. Let's keep it in the key of D for now. So the D string, one potato would be playing uh, actually two measures of this shuffle pattern. It sounds like this. So that's two measures or one potato. A little quicker. Can you play along with me? Now that's a potato at its most basic form. Again, just a single note, but there's all kinds of things that we can do to uh, spice up those potatoes. Put a little salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of ketchup and some Tabasco on them as well. One thing that we can do is we can add some drone notes takes a little bit of theory knowledge or just using our ear. So if we're in the key of D again, we've got other notes that sound good with that D note. In particular, uh, an A note. That's one of the notes in the D major chord. So we have an A string right here. So we could include it. It sounds something like this. Or we could even grab an A note beneath it on the second fret of the G string. Beyond that, we could also add some what I call ornaments, so slides and hammer-ons to, to make it sound a bit more like a fiddle. Um, so we could slide into that little A note down there and sound like this. Or we could even slide into the seventh fret down here to give us a unison note. If we play the seventh fret on the G string, that's the same note as an open D string. We could slide into that. probably heard that before, haven't you? Now, we don't only play that pattern. Potatoes can get more complex, and we can even get into some cross-picking type patterns as well. Uh, we might slide into that seventh fret and then cross-pick through the D and the A strings. It sounds something like this. So if we're going to play something in D like Whiskey Before Breakfast, it would sound something like this. Pretty cool, huh? So we can also play them in different keys. We're just going to change the note that's the star of the potato. It's easy to do that in the keys of A and in the keys of G because all we have to do is move what we've just learned either up a string or down a string. So if we're playing an A, we'll just move it to the A note and we can play some unison do that little cross picking lick. If we're playing it in G, 
We're going to have our bottom string typically as the star here, and we can uh, we could grab, of course, that open D string would sound great. Or we could even grab some unison. That fifth fret here is also a G note. There's all kinds of things that we can do there. So there's an intro to potatoes, you might say. There's a lot more to go into. There's all kinds of exercises and things. Actually, I've taught a complete lesson about this over on the site. So if you want tabs that demonstrate what we've learned today, uh, if you want to dive way deeper into potatoes and look at how to play in various keys, G, A, D, C, all that good stuff, and, and even into the more of the harmonies and cross-picking, come on over the, to the website, banjobinclark.com. If you join as a GoPay member, you have access to that full lesson and hundreds of other lessons on all kinds of instruments. If you enjoyed this video, again, I would appreciate it if you subscribed, click the little bell so that you're notified, and uh, practice them potatoes. Adios.